folks, Jonathan here. Let's see how we can get through this. I got a, got a feeling we're going to have cat problems again. Uh, nothing changes. Shave your beard and still nothing changes. Okay, so what we've got, Nana, you stay down, okay? So, I think we've got every piece that we could possibly get together for the engine, uh, the boiler. Uh, went to the farm again, found a part that we was missing, and let me see. I don't think there's anything else that we can find unless, you know, we was happen to, to find the governor, which I don't see that happening. Uh, according to the blueprints, that thing had uh, five-inch balls, and I don't see how, if they're solid cast iron, because it showed that they were cast, uh, five-inch balls, how heavy they'd be. I don't know how anybody would have had it sitting in their windowsill, but I guess it's possible. So, uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're going to get started on this thing here shortly. I've got most all of the blueprints uh, for linkage levers, uh, the entire governor blueprint, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, it's kind of hard to read, but I've got two copies of it. I think you know, we can figure it out and uh, build it. I've looked it over hard. I've studied on it, you know, trying to figure out you know, every part of what's what and how it worked and everything, and I think I've got it. So, uh, we're going to get the cordless valve assemblies out of here. This is going to have to be completely rebuilt. We may or may not bore it. I haven't checked it out really good yet. Uh, I've got a buddy, Dan, uh, that has a uh, uh, horizontal boring mill that I think will, will handle this. If we can get it in there weight-wise, we'd have to take everything we probably could off to be able to handle the weight. He does have a forklift though. But if we got everything off of it that was extra. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, cordless valve assemblies are going to have to come out in the part. Uh, we're going to have to probably take some uh, grease gun and, and force these ash pods apart to get the get them out. A friend of mine is going to come over. I'm going to get him to come over with his some measuring stuff. You know something. He's got a lot bigger stuff than what I've got when it comes to measuring. And we can actually put these bearing caps back on and check this Babbitt to see where we're at on measurements uh, of whether we're going to have to re-pour Babbitt in the crankshaft or if we can just recut the old groove in it and get by with what we've got. Uh, we don't want it to be, we don't have to have it where we're not going in production, but we want it to be sufficient that it's not going to destroy it, you know, or cause any problems. Uh, as for a lot of people said something about metal detecting down there i took my metal detector down there and you can't swing it in other words there's signals you know that whole entire place is nothing but two three four factories that are just been demolished and torn down and was done over the years uh we think we've tracked this thing back to 1935 when a factory moved into the building there. The building was actually built in, in 1924, around 1924 as a tobacco warehouse, the building that was closest to this engine. The problem was is the engine wasn't lined up with the building to be able to run anything in the building. And that same building later become uh, Morristown Furniture and then later Bass Industries. And the problem is, is I don't think that anything on this engine ran, maybe the boiler they used, you know, was using it, but I don't think this engine ran anything in that factory. So we're still sort of at a loss of where, you know, what was there building wise and what was running. And the problem, like I said before, is uh, the newspaper started in 1920 or 21 as the pilot. Uh, we can get information, you know, back into the 20s, but anything pre-1920 you know because there's no newspaper we don't have any informa information on and according to the town of Bass uh, all of the items historical items from pre-1920 or you know the older stuff was stolen or loaned and never brought back so we've got no info there I've went through the seaboard rail line trying to find out some information so far nothing there 
Uh, State Archives, I've gotten a uh, message back. They couldn't even find info on Vast Industries, so I know if they don't know Vast Industries, which was in 1946, 47, if they didn't have any info on that, they're not going to have any older info. So I think a lot of it's got to do with uh, not necessarily whether they've got the info or not, it's whether it's an inter interesting enough project for somebody to, to have the passion to take it on. So when you get a hold of some people that are into history, uh, you know, a steam engine is just not going to turn their crank. It's really not going to, not going to get them going on the hunt, you know. So, uh, and then others are, you know, it depends. So, hopefully we can get it figured out. Uh, everything else is going good. As you can see, I got a chrome rod there, which uh, we may or may not use for the, for the rod that we cut. Uh, but that's basically what we need. Uh, I'm just going to figure out if that's long enough. Uh, but, you know, you can buy them all day long. I mean, it's not, a, it's not something that's hard to get. So that surface on that would keep us from having any leaks and keep us from tearing packages up. So that's what we're, we're going to run eventually uh, is a rod like that, and we'll thread it on, on one end and then figure out how it goes in the piston on the other end. It says anything under a 20-inch bore was uh, heat fitted or, or shrank on and riveted. So we've got to find out where the rivet's at. But one of the things that Bates advertised uh, that a lot of the other companies didn't have is they had two rings. They had an upper and a lower ring. So that made the piston a little wider. So that gave it a chance to where it could have a rivet in the center. Uh, I was expecting to see a nut when I pulled the head off. But any, they said anything under 20 inch bore didn't have a nut, and this is only 14 inch bore. So I think this is 500 or no, I'm sorry, 5,548 cubic inches was my understanding. Uh, you know, it's 14 inch bore, 36 inch stroke, and with a you know 150 horsepower, 175 horsepower, whatever the horsepower rating was. Supposedly, it's got a 10,500 foot-pounds of torque, which would be about like 10, 10 semis, uh, which, you know, the torque ratings on these steam engines are outrageous, so I, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it a bit. Uh, steam is something else. Now, it would never make that kind of power on air, but we're not looking to run anything with it. But I am going to power this thing with air. I mean, I do plan on getting everything working, and, uh, you know, one of the things is the rarity of the engine. There's two things that this has that I guess most engines don't have. One thing being the toggle gear, it's a different different or toggle linkage, it's a different setup, and then the other being the uh, it's got a safety shutoff. And in 1910, like I said, there were uh, 67 flywheel explosions, and which was really surprising for me. Uh, but I'm going to show you a couple things. One thing that I had picked up that we was missing that we found on the farm. Okay, so we had a picture of this. And it was always sitting in here. From the time I first seen this engine, that's where that was sitting. And I just assumed, because it was rusted in there, that that's where it went. But I was totally wrong about that. It don't go there. Uh, this is actually the piece that they took out. And then it's going to check it out for us. But this is the piece that they took out of the governor that actually runs off the side and the belt runs on. So I'll get it off and show you here. Okay, so what we've got here is this. Off. Well, we're still chained up. But our governor mounts here. There would be a but another bevel gear right here. And that's where it runs in on the shaft. And this actually runs off of there. And it probably goes maybe this way. Like that. And it would have had a pulley and the belt that runs from here up the crankshaft but we've got this part and we've got the blueprints for the governor which is a pretty major undertaking
we're gonna have to get that uh the piece i just put up there apart see what we've got for bushings in it uh, i'm sure it don't run bearings and uh i seen the place for the oilers either for oilers or grease cups which would have been here and there so we're probably dealing with two different uh bushings shaft looks pretty rough but we could make a shaft i don't see any keyways or anything it may just had a set screw so we can figure that out from the hopefully from the blueprints anyway that was a missing piece and then uh the automatic shutoff is down here this is sort of different from all the others also so we're going to be learning like everything else as we do all this valve gear and these rods i'm assuming what happens is depending on where the governor's at these two rods they hook into the safety piece and there's a rod that runs up from the governor or down from the governor to the uh safety shutoff and i'm assuming it could these rods are limiting rods they, they actually limit the amount of of uh, steam it can go in through the throw on the valve and that's the best that i can come up with because the governor you see a lot of governors that have a steam valve on the bottom of them and that would adjust the the valve and the valve pressure but or the steam and the steam pressure but this don't so i'm learning a lot about it i'm not an expert by any means at all on any of this but willing to learn and that's the difference so let me get uh i've got a folder here we've got everything that's been sent to me everything that uh i've found myself and we printed out and let me show you the blueprints here okay probably hard to read i have noticed one thing already and that is i can read them a lot better outside than i can inside uh, i can see the bottom flange of this is 10 inches and uh, shaft, inch and seven sixteenths. Well, we've got our shaft here. So, you know, I'm not <laughs> steeped in reading blueprints either. So uh, I don't reckon I've ever read any, but, but here's our shaft, our shaft size, so we can make the shaft. And what it's doing is showing the shaft uh, turn 90 degrees to where, you know, you can get everything you need made off of it so that won't be an issue shafts no problem and it shows the length of it it's three foot ten inches on one of them and two foot two and a half inches on another depending on whether it uh has a hook gear or not hook gear so we'll have to figure that out so that's not an issue uh this looks to be it's a piece of cast iron so this is probably cast and then machine the balls are the same way. These are five inch diameter balls. Uh, we've got a link here and a link here. Uh, two different lengths. You got one length that, well, it's just like this one. And sort of what, what I call a fork and a knife. Uh, this would be the knife, this would be the fork. And that is sort of like a Harley Davidson rod, a tw you know, a twin, twin cylinder rod. So, here is our pattern for the piece I showed you that bolts on. Here's the piece that we've got for the belt drive, you know, to guide the belt. Uh, so we've got everything we need here. And thank goodness, looking outside, I can see this a lot better. Now here's our weight. We've already got it. Uh, that's for one side of the governor. And then the other side is just a piece of linkage that comes down. And, uh, and this is pretty simple here. This is just your slide that goes right here okay and then you got your four link bars we'll make our links uh our shaft like i said that is this oop i'm sorry is this and out each end of it one of them's the weight that hooks on the other one's a rod that comes all the way down for the governor so our shaft we've got to find a bevel gear uh Hopefully we can figure out if that bevel gear is the same. Both bevel gears are the same. If they are the same, I can copy what we've got. Shouldn't be an issue. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And there is a, uh, there's set screws that go in some of this stuff. You can see 716 set screw. So it would keep this thing from moving and set your backlash on your gears. 
Uh, you could probably shim between here and set your backlash on your gears. Anyway, that's what we're going to use. That's what we're going to try to do. We'll, you know, try our hand at it. I think we can make it and uh, make it run, but we'll see. All right. Okay, folks. Uh, I went to my printer and picked up our other blueprints. It shows just about everything else. I don't know what uh, Rich has left. But everything he sends, we're going to get copies of. Uh, this is the piece that is on the side for the valve gear that mine was actually broke right here at one time. Right there. And you can see the side of it. So, finding, finding and having correct... Uh, Blueprints for an engine. These are dated 1902 through 1905. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. Here's our uh, wrist plate, which is right there. Big wrist plate. I think it's 18 inch diameter or 19 inch diameter actually. So it's good size. There is our safety shut off which also has been repaired on our on our machine. I don't know why there's so many repairs. It makes me wonder maybe if it was moved at one time and the stuff was broken when it was moved. Now, if you notice, it's got a brass end and it's not even stuck. Reverse thread and then it's got a, a steel end with a bushing inside of it. Now, both of them go on here and this is the safety gear. And I'm not sure how it works, but I do know that the rod runs up from here and then runs through this hole, right? Hold on, this hole right here, and then uh, up to our governor, and our governor weight hangs on the other side. So I don't know. Hmm. This is just a bolt shoved down in the hole. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably something that was just stuck there. So we got two holes, probably two bolts. Let me see if that bolt comes out real quick. Okay, I was right. Somebody had just stuck a bolt down in there. So, there we go. That's what held the governor on. Two bolts. This is 10 inches, the flange. I've seen that on the prints. So, we're going to try to figure out. I guess one of the most important things is what size or what uh, this gear ran. Did it run one to one? If so, the other bevel gear will have the same number of teeth and be the same diameter. This governor is huge. I mean, it's, it's crazy how tall and big this governor is going to be and the balls on it being five inches in diameter each. I don't know what the weight is on that, but that's pretty heavy. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna add some, uh, some Nina in here at the end. I was trying to do this video or do a, a sort of a the style video before, um, as you'll see, I didn't, my, my beard wasn't trimmed down. And Nina was just having no part of it. She wasn't going to let me do it. And uh, so I'll add some of that in there at the end. And you can see how bad of a kitty cat she was being. So, all right. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye. Hey folks, Jonathan here. Just wanted to uh, sit down and talk a little bit about the engine, uh, about the history, about the situation of uh, trying to figure out what this thing ran, and and whatever we, wherever we go, wherever this takes us. Uh, here's the deal: uh, when I was a kid, and this had to be eight years old or younger, I used to ride the bus to school, and uh, I quit riding this particular bus or this route after I guess mid-year of being eight years old so this had to happen before that you know six seven eight years old uh, riding the bus to school you have to excuse now riding the bus to school and uh, there was one particular place where there was a tractor at that had steel wheels on it and uh, 
This was a... <laughs> what are you doing, though? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh... <laughs> Nina. Nina, you ain't gonna let me do a video? Okay. Don't drink Mama Pepsi, okay? Meow. Yeah. Like the engine, too, huh? So, uh... Anyway, there was a tractor sitting in the yard, and I could show you the spot it was sitting in. I could show you the house it was sitting in on the road. Uh, and like I said, this was when I was uh, five, six, seven, eight years old, and uh, it always fascinated me. It was, uh, I can't tell you the brand, although I wish I could, but I just remember it was orange. It looked like it was painted up more like yard art, so I'm not saying it was supposed to be orange. This wasn't a regular tractor. This wasn't a farm all an international John Deere. This was something like a bait steel mule, uh, possibly a happy farmer. It was an oddball tractor. And, you know, it just fascinated me to go by. You know, these memories is, is really nice. And, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? And then, uh, What are you doing there? Are you going to stay up there? <laughs> you ornery thing. You ornery thing. So they bought and sold a lot of equipment, and, and Kathy actually worked on the equipment while Larry was out buying the equipment. So it wasn't odd to go by and see her have a cylinder head off a D6 Caterpillar. You know, I didn't know at a young age that I enjoyed the mechanical stuff. But uh, Nana's going to move the camera. <laughs> Nana, you can't stay over there now. And uh, she's loving up on the camera for tripod. So uh, I always knew that I liked mechanical stuff, but you know, I never realized how much, I guess, even back then when, when I was around it. But I want the same thing for this engine. I would love to have this sitting out here and you know, a, a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, or nine-year-old kid that will be able to drive by it and remember it. And... The memory I have of that tractor, I know, you know, it's nothing but seeing a tractor and having a memory of it, but it means a lot more than that to me. And I think a lot of the things that we remember when we were younger like that sort of make our life go in a particular direction. And, you know, I, I like to give part of it to that tractor. And just the fact that I've I seen the mechanical parts of it, uh, you know, every day riding at the bus, I remember just looking out the window waiting for that tractor to come up to where I could look at it. And it was really interesting. And the mechanical parts of it's what, I guess, part of what got me into doing what I'm doing. So that's why I want to set this thing in a location where uh, people can see it when they go by. But, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's got way more to do with just somebody seeing it and, and stopping it and saying something. It's the memory, you know, that they get from it. But, uh, but anyway, that's the plan. <laughs> you don't quit. So that's the plan. Uh, a guy that I think really knew told me that there was a wind and sash factory there. That don't mean there wasn't one, but that don't mean because there was one there that it was what this engine ran, uh, or even a candle factory. You know your claws are sharp, right? Nana, you're making it hard, you know that? You're making it hard, you're a show off, that's what you are. I turn the camera on and you go to showing off. Why do you do that for? Huh? Why? Why are you doing that? You gonna let me do the video? You gonna let me do the video or not? Hmm? You gonna let me do the video? Stay over there. Stay over there and be good. Stay over there and be good, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna be good, but let me do the video, okay? Let me finish up the video. Y'all have to be, excuse me, I'm being attacked by a cat. She's in a playful mood today for some reason. What's up, Nana? Are you want me to feed you or give you some treats or something? Hmm? What are you wanting from me? 
You gonna beat me up, huh? You beating up on me? Is that what you're doing? All right, come on, let's go get some treats. Okay, Nana was acting a little happy today, so. Anyway, our killer attack cat is coming back, I see her. <laughs> She's coming to get me. What's up, Nana? Hmm? Are you coming to thank me for your food? So I, I, I gave her some food to, to keep her keep her away for a little bit. Nana. Huh? What's wrong? What are you doing? So anyway. <laughs> she makes me laugh. Huh? You make me laugh, don't you? Mm, you got your food? Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Mm. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Happy? Happy? Are you a steam engine cat? Are you a steam engine cat? Are you a steam engine cat? Mm. Are you a steam engine cat? Are you a steam engine kitty cat? What do you always want to knock my hat off for? Mm. What do you want to knock my hat off for? So, anyway. Nana's back. <laughs> She's gonna attack. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> Do I need to give you more food? I gave you a big bowl. I gave you a big bowl. You know, it's not so bad with them claws in my shoulder. It sure does hurt. It sure hurts, Nana. You got some big claws. I mean, you got some big claws. I don't know how I'm supposed to get anything done. How am I supposed to get anything done, Nana? I'll take you over there to the swamp and let the snakes get you. Huh? Let me take you to the swamp and let the snakes get you. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Nana, you got to have better things to do than hang out with me. Ain't you got some mice to go chase? <laughs> See you. See you, Nana. See you, Nana. All right. Go do some cat scanning. You're not earning your keep. <laughs> you need to get down in here and check this cylinder out. I'm through.